Are you looking to grow your real estate investing business? My company, Future Flipper, can help. We've taught hundreds of people all over the country how to flip, wholesale, and buy rental properties. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your investing journey. Whether you're trying to get your first deal or scale your company, Future Flipper can help. We have courses, coaching, and events for all levels of investors. So if you want to take the next step, go to futureflipper.com and book a free consultation to see how we can best help you. Once again, that's futureflipper.com. If you've ever wanted to invest with me on my real estate deals, it's now possible. At Pineda Capital, we're purchasing value-add real estate all across the country. This includes multifamily, commercial, and land development. The best part is, with my network, social media presence, and marketing strategies, we're able to get the very best deals that others don't have access to. You can join in with me on those deals if you're an accredited investor. If you want to learn more, head over to PinedaCapital.com to see our current opportunities. Once again, that's PinedaCapital.com. Welcome to The Ryan Pineda Show. Where our mission is to invest. I only expect to make money in things that I understand. Innovate. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And inspire. I am much more likely to hit my goal just due to putting it out there. You're now rocking with the best. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Ryan Pineda Show. Today, I am solo, and I am talking about raising kids. I don't think I've ever done a video about this one, so... I figured it's time to kind of give my thoughts as a father and as somebody who has navigated through what I think has actually been a pretty tough three years of uh, being a father, which I'll kind of get into here shortly. Um, But yeah, I want to talk about what it's like trying to be a dad while managing businesses and trying to grow social media and be a husband and, you know, do all these things that I've got to do. So let's jump right into it. So first off, give you my uh, statistics as a father. Um, My son, James, by the time this comes out, he might be three years old by then. Uh, His birthday is in January. So uh, he's three years old. Uh, My daughter, Olivia, is one and a half. And, you know, those are my two kids. My wife and I waited five years to have kids after we got married. We wanted to enjoy our lives, um, you know, just together before we had kids. That was part of the plan. And, you know, we were also broke (laughs) initially starting out. So, we couldn't really afford kids. Uh, we got married really young. She was 21 years old. So, you know, having kids wasn't really something we uh, wanted to do right away. So after about four years of marriage, we started talking about it. And, you know, we went for it. And eventually, James was born. Now, James, I, I got to tell you, is I, I love my son. And, you know, I call him my miracle boy because his life especially in his first year, was so difficult. And for us as parents, you know, we were really tested. Um, Easily, his first year of life was like the most stressful part of uh, probably my entire life. So to give you the quick rundown of uh, why that is, you know, James was uh, scheduled to be born, scheduled, uh, I guess that's what you would call it. Uh, He was supposed to be born in mid-March, And, you know, that's how we were planning it. You know, we were getting his room ready, doing all the things that, you know, you're supposed to do as parents. And all of a sudden, Mindy starts having a lot of pain um, at the house. And so much pain that she's crying. And, you know, she was pregnant. She was seven months pregnant. I'm thinking, okay, like, let's take you to the hospital. I hope nothing is wrong with the baby. And we take her to the hospital. And they say, hey, you know, your wife is having contractions. And at the time, I didn't even honestly know what that meant. Um, (laughs) I've never had a kid. And uh, I've heard the word contractions, but I never really thought about what it actually meant. And I remember there at the hospital, I go, okay, okay, just like nodding my head. And they're like, okay, well, you know, we're going to have to, you know, give her this drug to try and slow down those contractions because uh, she's like, it's happening really fast. And I go, what do you mean is happening? Like, what's what's going on? And they're like, we're going to try and keep the baby in there as long as possible because, you know, it, the baby is two months premature. And I remember asking the nurse, I was like, what do you mean? Like, are you telling me the baby is going to be born? And they're like, yeah, that's what it means. 
And I just, like, it was seriously the most shocked moment of my entire life. I didn't know what exactly they meant. Um, I didn't know what was going on. I was just so, like, I was just in shock. Like, it was seriously probably the only moment of my life I was in complete shock. I didn't comprehend what they were saying. And after getting over it, I remember thinking, like, wow, like, this is happening. Like, I this was totally unexpected. Like this was not to plan. Um, you know, most of the things that I put to plan usually play out pretty much like the plan and this did not. And so I asked the doctor, I'm like, what's going to happen is, is the baby going to be okay? We didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. We didn't, um, uh, we wanted to be surprised. And I was like, is the baby going to be okay? Like do babies survive being born this early? And they were like, you know, two months premature, it, it's, it should be okay. But you know, you just, we can't obviously promise anything, but, um, we're going to do everything we can to keep the baby in there as long as possible. Like every hour counts. And for them to tell me every hour counts, I was like, wow, this is going to be like, I just pray that, you know, my baby is going to, you know, be sur like survive this and that the baby would stay in as long as possible. Well, you know, fast forward, Mindy is now into labor. The The drugs didn't really do anything to slow it down. And um, she's given birth within hours of us going to the hospital and finding all this out. And it, once again, this all happened so quickly that I just couldn't even understand in my mind, like, what was happening. Like, I was about to be a dad. And, you know, within... I don't even know how long the labor was. It was like pretty short. She went from zero to a hundred, like so fast. Um, she ended up, uh, giving birth and, you know, James came out, um, obviously found out it was a boy. I was super hyped. And thankfully too, he was a lot bigger than, um, a normal, I guess, seven month old, uh, or like, I guess seven month, uh, you know, carried baby would be, um, he was five pounds, which was really big. And, you know, so they were really hyped about that. And immediately he was sent to the NICU because he couldn't breathe. So, you know, they send him to the NICU. Um, I go and, and check on him and everything else. And, you know, he's hooked up to the respirator and um, the ventilator, I should say, and like all this stuff. And, you know, we get to hold him and everything. And I'm like, what's, what's his status? And, they're like, you know, it, it, he, all his vitals are good. Everything looks good. Um, you know, he can't breathe on his own. Um, so he's going to be in the NICU for a while. And I said, okay. Like, I, I still didn't really know what that meant. And sure enough, after a while, we, um, after staying there for a couple of days, they said, James is going to have to be here, you know, for a while. And you're going to have to come visit him, you know, in order to see him. So for the first two months of his life, um, James was in the NICU and every morning I would go visit him after the gym and, um, you know, go feed him milk and, uh, try and, you know, help him any way I could, you know, just hold him, feed him, um, all those things. And then Mindy and I would go see him at night. Mindy would go see him, you know, on her own time throughout the day too. But, uh, then we would go see him tonight or at night together after work. And it was so difficult because, you know, you see your first child strapped up to all this equipment. He can't eat. He can't drink. He can't even breathe on his own. And uh, it was just really tough. It was tough as a parent, um, especially for her and I. And uh, it's like it makes me even like tear up a little bit uh, retelling the story. But, you know, after two months – he starts making progress. He starts, you know, learning to drink the milk. Um, Mindy was pumping the whole time too, um, making sure that he got um, real breast milk and everything. Um, and, you know, he learned to eventually breathe on his own. And, you know, we got to take him home after two months, which was so exciting, but also so terrifying because, you know, I just remember there uh, sitting there thinking like, man, is he going to be able to like, like, what if he stops breathing? while we're sleeping, you know, because that's this whole issue. He couldn't breathe. 
and like now they're gonna let him go like is he ready like I was like man should he stay in the NICU longer like I don't know and um you know sure enough we brought him home you know we prayed we we did everything and um you know he was uh thankfully good but man you know his life has always been a struggle um they they told us from the beginning like you know he's gonna be delayed in almost everything just because he's two months premature he's got you know, these issues and, um, you're gonna have to put them in, in therapies and everything, which was fine. You know, we'll, we'll do whatever we, we have to do for him. And you know, that, that has been the story of his life. He's still in therapies like multiple times a week, just doing different ones like speech and, um, you know, different kinds of stuff. And, um, you know, he's, he's obviously a little delayed in you know, most things, but, um, he's progressing. And as a parent, uh, I'm doing everything I can to help him progress and, uh, you know, give him all the resources that uh, we can. But um, even though that was, you know, crazy in itself, the other thing that that ended up happening to him was um, in December, you know, he was almost a year old. Um, That month of December, he ends up banging his head. He, he falls off the couch and hits his head on the ground and he gets this bump. So we take him to the hospital and the hospital, um, you know, says, Hey, you know, the bump's fine. It's doesn't look like it's anything crazy. And we say, okay, you know, I, I guess it's fine. Well, a couple of days later, we're just looking at it and we're watching him act and he's acting different. And I'm thinking, this is not right. Like there's no way that, um, this is like, he's okay. This baby shouldn't have bumps this big. And so we ended up taking him to a different hospital and they were like, he needs to get, you know, an x-ray and an MRI immediately. You know, they never, they're like, they never even did that to him. And I was like, no, they just checked him and they said he was fine. So we do the MRI and they're like, his brain is bleeding. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what, what do we do? And they're like, he has to go under surgery like now. And they're like, we have to call in the surgeon. We're going to get set up. Like we're doing everything. And I'm like, dude, this is, this is insane. And by the way, this is December 23rd. Okay. It's right before Christmas. And you know, we, you know, we're praying. We don't like, you know, they're like, he's under going to, he's going to go undergo brain surgery. And it was absolutely insane, but, uh, you know, they brought the surgeon in, um, and they put him under to, to have brain surgery. And, uh, that was probably the longest night of my life, just waiting to see the results and see what they said. And, um, you know, the next day they, they said that the surgery was successful and, uh, you know, he should make a full recovery. And, um, so we spent Christmas Eve there just kind of, you know, being grateful that um, everything was good. And thankfully, on Christmas Day, they actually released him and let us take him home. So, like, that was the best Christmas Day present ever. Um, But the reason I tell that whole story is, like, that was my son's first year of life. And that was our first year as parents, Mindy and I. And it was, you know... I know that there's parents who've had it a lot worse, but man, that was, that was stressful and that was extremely difficult. And, you know, it was through that process that I started to develop this philosophy that, you know, eventually became the wealthy way, um, where it was like, man, this stuff with business and, you know, all these things I think are so important, (sighs) It's just like they're not that important compared to the rest of life. Like they shouldn't be held to this higher standard that, you know, people hold to other things, you know. And I started to think differently in how I was going to act and uh, be a dad because I wanted to be there for my son. And actually, I had to dedicate so much more time because my son needed so much help you know, with all these different things. And so I had to start being more efficient with my time. And, you know, another thing ended up happening was, you know, my wife was struggling um, really bad with, 
you know, being a mom with, with a kid and, um, obviously, uh, a kid with so many different things going on. And, um, you know, she felt like I wasn't there enough for her, um, throughout that process because I was out at work, um, doing my thing. And, uh, eventually I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to work at home on Wednesdays to kind of support her and give her a break and, uh, you know, do what needs to be done. So I started doing this thing called work from home Wednesdays and, you know, I just didn't go to work on Wednesdays and I still wasn't even working on the weekends. Um, I've talked about this many times, like, you know, coming home at five or leaving the office by five was still something I did back then. And I always wanted to do not working weekends was still something I was doing, but it still wasn't, uh, enough for what I needed to do for my family at that time. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to stay home on Wednesdays too. So, you know, I start giving my employees and everyone else more responsibility so I could um, be there for my wife, be there for my son. And that really was helpful. And my, my wife, Mindy appreciated, and she saw the sacrifice of, uh, you know, not, and I shouldn't even call it a sacrifice. It's not even a sacrifice. It was a decision of the priorities in my life. Like this is a bigger priority to me to make sure that I am there for my wife and that I'm going to help my son in any way I can and be there for him in his first year of life. And, you know, it ended up working out great. Um, you know, we became stronger than ever as a couple. Um, it was, like I said, easily the hardest year of my life and hers. Definitely the hardest year of our marriage to, you know, try and raise and go through all those things we went through with James's first year. Are you looking to find off-market real estate deals? One of the best tools my team uses is Batch Leads. With Batch Leads, you're able to pull data, manage lists, and send text messages. On top of that, you can get nationwide access to the MLS to get pictures and comps. My team has used Batch Leads to get some of our best deals, so I know it works. You want to start today? You can get half off your first month by going to batchleads.io and using the promo code Ryan. Once again, that's batchleads.io, promo code Ryan for half off your first month. Now, back to the show. But, um, you know, thankfully, everything worked out. And, you know, as we went into the next year, um, you know, she got pregnant again with Olivia. Um, and then, you know, COVID happens, right? And, you know, we're doing all this stuff uh, with COVID and not knowing what's going on there. So I was forced to work from home during this time while she's pregnant. But then, um, you know, she she had to go on bed rest because James was born two months premature. She was a at risk mom. And so they said, you know, we're going to put you on bed rest like three months early. So she was like immobile for three months, just kind of. Um, because she had to be the doctor's orders. And so I had to pick up a lot of slack again to take care of James, to take care of her because she couldn't move and, um, you know, deal with this COVID thing too. you know, run the businesses and <laughs> figure out what's going to happen. And uh, once again, stressful time, right, for most people. But to me at that point, I, I thought it wasn't, I didn't even feel stress at that point because the previous year going through so much with James's birth, James's brain surgery, just like learning to be a father, um, going through COVID and stuff was like a uh, walk in the park and even on bed rest. I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to do what we got to do. And even with her on bed rest, um, God still found a way to use that time, um, to grow our family and, uh, to help us out. It was during this time that, you know, the lockdowns, I've told the story, but I started doing YouTube videos and I started doing TikToks. And um, eventually, or not eventually, but those very first videos, guess who was my editor? My wife. And my wife was editing the videos from bed rest. I made her like this little makeshift table that um, <laughs> it actually is the leaf on one of our tables. It was the leaf. And she put it over a chair, that a rocking chair that she was sitting on for bed rest. And she would get uh, this brand new Mac and throw the keyboard on there. And she would edit my videos on bed rest. So that's what she did with her time. So she was still like, you know what? I want to contribute to the family and do whatever I can. And that's what she did. She edited because 
that's all she could do on bed rest while I did my things and, you know, tried to get the businesses doing what they're supposed to do and, you know, get her whatever she needed and also, you know, take care of James. So, um, you know, even with that, Olivia still ended up being born a month early. Um, and you know, it's just, I don't, it, it just is what it is. Maybe our kids are just, you know, they want to get out quick. Maybe like me, they're just always, <laughs> they're always in a rush to go. But, um, Olivia ended up being born a month early. And at this point, you know, we knew, <laughs> I knew what contractions were at this point. And I knew that, uh, you know what? She's born a month early. My last one was born two months early and you know, he's good now. So I'm not uh, as scared about this one. And Olivia, you know, was born and you know, she has to go to the NICU just like James did. And I'm like expecting the worst. Like, okay, she's going to be in the NICU for a month. It's going to be the same deal again. But thankfully she actually didn't have to spend any time. Um, she was good. She could eat. She was breastfeeding. She was um, able to breathe on her own. Like she was pretty normal. And uh, they let us take her home uh, pretty immediately after like a day or two. So super excited, um, you know, as a parent, you know, how um, the birth and everything played out with her. But um, long story short, that has been my journey as a parent, you know. Uh, the last year and a half, Olivia has been um, born and uh, she's a year and a half. And, um, you know, James is three now, like I said, everyone's doing good. Uh, we're now just adjusting to life as parents and trying to understand this balance that we all strive to have. Like, how do we balance, you know, being good spouses, being good parents, while also, you know, like taking care of all the things that need to be taken care of in our lives. And, um, you know, I'll tell you, for me, this, like I said, this is what led to me creating The Wealthy Way. And if you don't know what the wealthy way is, everything is free there because I'm so passionate about it. Uh, if you go to wealthyway.com, you can get access to the course, the planner, um, the discord community, everything's completely free. And it's all about this. It's all about creating balance in life. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that comes with prioritizing it and making it important you know, not having this uh, misguided thought that, man, you know, uh, yeah, I, I got to sacrifice now and uh, my family will understand. I'll sacrifice now and then maybe in, you know, a few years when I get that promotion or whatever, like, then they'll appreciate it. Or I got to make more money so I can put my kids in better schools and give them more opportunities and all this stuff. But, um, you know, it's not really how it works. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Life <laughs> keeps going, and your kids are only going to be that old once. You know, you don't get those years back. And all this stuff that you're doing that you think is for your family, when you think about it, is actually probably against what your family wants. You know, your kids would probably rather have you than the nice school. You know, they'd probably rather have you than, you know, you working all these hours to go put them with some you know, special sports team or something like that. Like at the end of the day, there's that stuff's not as important, you know, and most people, most people just don't realize that. Um, the other thing is too, I think a lot of people, especially men just need to step up and do it, man, because it's so easy to, to come home from work, right? You've worked a long day, you've worked whatever, eight, 10 hours and you come home and you're like, dude, I need a break. Right? Like I've, I've worked all day. Like I don't, I need to sit down and chill and, um, get some me time. Right? Well, your dad, you signed up for much more than that. You signed up to be a provider. You signed up to be a father, to be a spouse, to do all of these things for your family. And if you think that just working is all you signed up for, you are sadly mistaken. Um, you know, for me, it would be easy to to come home at whatever, 5, 5.30 and, you know, be like, where's my dinner? You know, I'm coming home. I'm chilling. I'm going to go watch the Lakers. I'm going to go and, you know, do my thing. Like, I've worked. I provide for the family. It's cool. But that's not what I do, you know. What I do is I come home and 
if there's food and Mindy makes it, fantastic. I love it. If I have to go pick up food on the way home from work, I'll go pick it up. Um, I'm going to always eat dinner with my family. Then I always give the kids baths because I haven't seen them all day. Um, I actually enjoy giving them a bath. I'm also going to play with them until they're ready to go to bed. I'm going to read them books, and then I'm going to go rock them to sleep. And this whole process, you know, starts from the time I get home to, you know, I don't know, around 8.30 when the last one finally goes to sleep. So, you know, it's easy to say for me, like, man, I've been working 12 plus hours of doing things, um, whether it be working out at the gym, you know, at work, you know, working towards my relationship with my kids before I finally have a time to take a break and, you know, at least relax and um, zone out or something, right? Um, and that's not even counting, like, spending time with my wife after and, and just hanging out. But uh, I do that every single day. And there are days where I'm tired and I don't necessarily want to do it because, you know, work, I had a long day or just got bad sleep or, you know, James' first year of life, uh, you know, he would wake up two or three times a night and uh, I was the one who took it upon myself to do it um, and to go feed him and stuff. And uh, let me tell you, that year was tough because I didn't sleep very good, but I just had to do it. And I think that's what a lot of you guys need to realize, especially you men, is that, you know, you signed up for this. You know, there's no feeling bad for you of like, man, you know, you work so hard. Like, your kids don't know that. You know, when you choose not to play with your kids because you're tired or you had a tough day at work and you just choose to neglect them for whatever reason, they don't know that. And it's just really selfish thinking on your part to, you know, be like so selfish about like, you know what, me, 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 this is my day and I don't have time to, to go uh, pour into someone else. Like, no, dude. For lack of a better word, just sack up and do it. Make it happen. And uh, that's kind of the approach I take is like, look, these are things that need to get done, and I'm going to do them. And I actually enjoy doing them, even when I'm tired. And it's not every day. It's not like I'm perfect by any means. But even those days where I don't feel good, my kids would never know because I find a way to get it done. And, you know, I'll just tell you, they're only one young, or they're only young once. And my kids are still young. And I know that just talking to other people and just knowing how life is, it's going to go by really quick. And I, I don't want to regret that. Like, I know that there's only one period in their life where I'm going to be able to rock them to bed, you know, and put them in their crib. And then after that, they're going to be older and they're going to be like, dude, you know, <laughs> don't, I don't want to do that, right? So I'm just enjoying that time. And, you know, for me, my biggest struggle is, you know, being present with them. Because even when I am with them, am I really with them, you know? Am I on my phone? Am I watching TV? Like, or am I engaging with my kids? That's something my wife gets on me about a lot. And I'll admit I'm, you know, definitely need a lot of improvement in that. I need to put my phone away. I need to talk to them, engage with them, play with them, and do the things that, you know, the kids need me to do. And uh, it's something that I'm constantly working on and I'm aware of. And, you know, I, I would just say, you know, don't think that just because you're physically near them that you're actually, you know, pouring into them. Like there's two different things. So, um, you know, for me, it's just something that, uh, I prioritize in my life. You know, I, I love those routines every night with them. Um, on weekends, I still don't work. I love hanging out with my family, includes my wife and my kids. Um, and it's like, I can tell you, if I have enough time in the day to do all the things I do, um, in business anyways, and I still can hang out with my kids, you can too. There's a way to do it. It just is a matter of your priorities and whether or not it's important to you to have a relationship with your kids and your spouse. If it's not important to you and your business is, you know, more important to you, then, you know, so be it. Like, there's not much I can tell you, but if you say that family's important, your actions better, you know, reveal that. 
not just your words, but your actions better show that too. And, uh, you know, that's my hope for 2022. You know, like I said, the wealthy way is something I created to help people realize that and understand that. I'm going to be talking a lot more about it because it is such a big issue. And uh, if you're struggling with it, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Everyone, like way more people struggle with this than you would realize. Most people aren't even aware that it's an issue, okay? Um, If this is the first time you're hearing this and you feel convicted, like do something about it. Don't watch my YouTube videos and go uh, watch whatever next video pops up here. Like go actually (laughs) put the headphone down, the tablet, the TV, whatever, the phone, and go hang out with your kids. That's it. It's that simple. Just put some time into them. Whatever they like to do, that's what you're going to do. And, um, you know, just understand things change, too. As your kids get older, things are changing. And I'm already thinking about that. You know, once my kids have their own activities, right, they, they're they playing sports, they got different events that they're going to go to, and we got to drive them around all this stuff. Like, I'm thinking about that. Like, how am I going to navigate this? How am I still going to do all the things I want to do in business while also still being present and, you know, supporting my kids and the things they're interested in. And it's going to be exciting to figure out. I don't know how it's going to happen because it's going to take a lot more time um, out of my day than currently um, I do. But it could also just mean I need to work really hard now so that um, I can anticipate having to spend that time because I want to because my businesses are able to function without me. And so maybe that's where you're at. Maybe you're single. Maybe you don't even have a. Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you're not married. But understand these things are going to happen, um, and you're going to have choices to make once you do have kids. And um, I would just hope that you would prioritize them, that you would schedule them into your day, and that you'd be present when you know you're with them. So that's my spiel on raising kids. If you get value out of this, share this episode with somebody leave a five-star review, um, you know, subscribe, all those things. And uh, let me know in the comments below, what can you improve on as a parent? I'd love to hear it. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching the Ryan Pineda Show. If you want to work with me, head over to ryanpineda.com. You can find my courses, coaching programs, and upcoming events. We also have free resources you can download. So head over to ryanpineda.com.